So, how do we treat obstructive sleep apnea syndrome? Uh, treatment of obstructive sleep apnea syndrome requires the right diagnosis initially and then to assess the severity of the obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. As we mentioned earlier, obstructive sleep apnea syndrome is a result of stop breathing while we sleep. So when we do the sleep testing, we assess how bad was the sleep apnea. How many times this person stopped breathing while he sleep? If he stopped breathing five times or less an hour of sleep, we consider that it's okay. If it's between five to 15, we consider it mild form of obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, 15 to 30, moderate form, anything above 30, severe. In addition to that, we check what's the oxygen level for the patients. Was he maintaining good oxygen level while he sleep or when he stopped breathing, his oxygen dropped significant? And anything, if his oxygen dropping less than 90, we consider it significant hypoxia while he sleep. So to start treating the patients, I need to know what was the severity of his disease, what was the symptoms of the patients to start the treatment. In general, if we have very mild form of obstructive sleep apnea syndrome and the patient is not much symptomatic, sometimes lifestyle changes may be helpful to control those cases. So if he's a little overweight, we ask for weight reduction. It is known 10% decrease of the weight may decrease obstructive sleep apnea with the chance 20 to 30%. So weight reduction is a very important factor. Also from the history, if the patient is smoking, we advise him to avoid smoking. If there's any evidence of upper airway congestion, maybe sometimes nasal spray, anti-congestant medications, anti-allergy medications may be helpful for those cases. So lifestyle modification is very helpful to control mild form of obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, especially when it's not much symptomatic. But what about the moderate and severe obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, or even mild form of sleep apnea with the significant symptoms? Those are the cases where medical treatment is must to prevent cardiovascular complications. When we talk about medical treatment, we're talking about CPAP or PiPAP. CPAP, it's a machine, it's continuous positive airway pressure. So it's a small machine, takes the air and re-push it again in a special tube. The tube will be connected to a mask. The mask will be placed at the nose of the patients or at the mouth of the patients. And then when he will go to sleep, he will turn on the machine, put the mask on and sleep. Then the, the machine will recognize when he stops breathing, will push a little higher to control his airway, and when he's breathing, it's probably will go to lower pressure where he can continue to sleep without any more hypoxia or stop breathing. Uh, PiPAP is similar machines to the CPAP, but it can deliver two types of the pressure, higher pressure and lower pressure, depending on his breathing situation. Away from the medical treatment, which is the most effective way to treat those cases, we have specific cases where surgery is indicated on those cases. As we mentioned earlier, some of the risk factors for this to develop sleep apnea is large tonsils, uh, obstruction in the nose, uh, huge tongue, small jaw pushed back. Surgical treatment for those cases may be helpful, especially if the patient is not able to use the CPAP or PiPAP. So if you have large tonsils, the section of the tonsils may help to open the airway. Some surgical treatments with advancing the jaw to the front, it may be helpful on those situations. Thank you.